All right, Bering, here we go. Ooh, I'm excited. Let me begin by saying that you have made an enormous amount of assumptions, uh, I believe, based on logical fallacies, and you've made assumptions about things uh, that I mean. Yeah, we all make assumptions about what people mean every day. If we didn't, language would just be a series of meaningless noises. The trick is to make more reasonable assumptions than unreasonable assumptions. When I've given statistics or articulated a view that are, very simply, incorrect. Okay. First question. Can you please clarify what you meant in your last video by boys' linguistic representation is 9 to 1 over female linguistic representation? Um, I don't believe I claimed that. Oh, I think you did. That the ratio is about 9 to 1 in, like, boy linguistic representation over female representation. Um, I can't quite remember the numbers, but regardless, I will post a link below. Thanks for that. I'll have a look. Essentially, it was based on a study that was done in the US um, among school children. Um, it was done in Canada among one class of Punjabi Sikh children. Yeah, I'm not joking, Punjabi Sikh children. That said that when, whatever the percentage was, I guess you've said that I said 9 to 1, um, was that when girls that one boy spoke that many more times than women than girls did in class and two that when girls spoke over a certain amount of time a percentage of time both boys and girls thought that girls were dominating even though that time that girls were it's all right take a minute take a minute speaking or being um, represented in terms of talking time in the classroom was significantly less than 50 percent both boys and girls thought that women, the girls were dominating. And yeah, it seems that male linguistic representation very well could have been dominating in this one particular classroom of Indian, Canadian, Punjabi Sikhs. To quote directly from Alison Jewell's website, this class is a grade two English language learning classroom at a Canadian Punjabi Sikh school where all the students share the Punjabi Sikh heritage. Dr. Jewell suggests that the girls in the grade two classroom she explored were silenced by their teacher and by the teacher's methods. Hmm, not looking good. Before we completely write this study off though, we may as well get a credible third party opinion. I did a Google search and found this review by Professor Deborah Cameron, Professor of Language and Communication at the University of Oxford in England. In a sentence, she sums the book up as follows. Flaws in the design and execution of the study render the answers Julie offers superficial and unconvincing. Um, I think this goes to show or really supports this idea um, that both men and women have been socially conditioned to believe that um, gender inequality is a normal way of life. I mean, there have been studies that have been done. Studies, you say? Geez, I can't compete with that. You may as well not even provide links to these studies because you've got this in the bag. And it's basically the one third rule. I know I've mentioned this in a video, but when women um, are represented more than a third of the time in things like the media or on, you know, the front page of the news or whatever it is. Talisha, you do know that saying it really fast doesn't make it a fact, don't you? Both men and women think that women are dominating the conversation or, or whatever form of media it is. It's crazy. Let, if it's over one third, not even 50%. Crazy? Crazy. Um, second question. If male members of cabinet and male high level executives in the media sh lose some of their privilege to make way for women, uh, should lose some of their privilege to make way for women, is it also fair that we reach gender parity in less glamorous industries, i.e. mining and construction? <laughs> All right. First of all, I have never advocated for gender parity in the sense of 50-50% representation. Oh, haven't you? Fair enough. Because it's just that I, I thought you said something along the lines of... And it's really about putting, creating an equal playing field, an equal level, so that women have the same representation as men. Okay, so if you've never advocated for 50-50 representation, while at the same time advocating for equal representation between men and women, you must be pushing for, say, 45% women, 45% men, and 10% trans? The most common way of uh, gauging gender parity is through numbers and, and representation of men and women in different fields and sectors. No shit. 
I have never advocated for that. Um, you've never advocated for the use of numbers to gauge gender representation? Right. This is an assumption that you've made and a logical fallacy, very slippery slope thing that's going on here. I have, you have said that I'm advocating for equal outcome because we have equal opportunity. I have never said you're advocating for equal outcome because we have equal opportunity. I have asserted that you are advocating for equal outcome because you are a feminazi cunt. Your words, by the way. I am saying I do not believe that we have equal opportunity. And I am both saying and demonstrating that we do have equal opportunity. Remember those acts of parliament that I put forward in the last video? Um, so in regards to your question, um, you know, I think that one, I'm not asking or wanting us to reach gender parity, but two, yes, I believe that if those industries were made more accessible, um, that women should and would want to work in industries that are less glamorous. Women should and would want to work in industries that are less glamorous. Bet you don't. Such as mining and construction. When I talk about um, industries not being as accessible to women as they are to men, I'm talking about things like um, the way women are treated when they partake in these industries. Um, an example, a really good example, is um, in the media in the last couple of years about some of the military sectors and, you know, women being sexualized and treated like sexual objects and and basically rampant sexism taking place where, you know, a woman will partake in consensual uh, sexual relations with a man and he'll be filming it and then posting it online and posting it to his friends. Uh, yeah, that happened once. Hardly rampant sexism, is it? I don't know what to say, Talisha. Assholes exist. That doesn't mean that all men are assholes. Like this is the kind of sexism and, and lack of access that I'm talking about. So if one asshole exists in an industry, it is blocking access to all women. Good logic. Um, I'm not saying that um, women should be 50-50% represented in these industries. What I'm saying is that sometimes access for women in certain industries is not tangible. <laughs> Access by definition isn't tangible, dickhead. But it's still a roadblock. Um, you know, what kind of person wants to work in an industry where they are treated significantly differently to their colleagues and, and are, are, you know, sexualized or patronized or put down or, or made to feel inferior based on their sex? Like, How many times has this happened to you? And if it hasn't happened to you any times, on what basis are you saying this? Obviously nobody. Three, should we be aiming for overall gender parity in the Australian workforce, i.e. sacking 600,000 men and four 600,000 women to work in their place? Again, I have never ad advocated for this kind of gender parity. These are just like very silly assumptions that you're making on my behalf so that women have the same representation as men. Okay, I think it's literally impossible to make an assumption on someone's behalf because if I was to make an assumption on your behalf, I am making the assumption, so therefore it's my assumption, isn't it? Um, so, no, I don't believe that we should be aiming for gender parity um, in the Australian work workforce in the sense that we need to sack men and force women to work in their place so that women have the same representation as men. Okay, so if you don't think that we need to sack a certain number of men and force a certain number of women to work in their place, how exactly will we reach the point where women have the same representation as men? But I believe that we need to have systems in place that mean that, um, you know, if women choose to be primary caregivers, they have access to jobs and, and to full time and, and um, secure employment when they choose to go back to the wo into the workforce. and <laughs> When they choose. You've um, never run a business, have you? And things like that. Like, I'm not saying that we need to sack men because men don't deserve to be in their jobs. I'm saying that we promote, even in unconscious ways, gender inequality, which means that women have less access to certain types of jobs in the workforce. Four, do you see discrimination against men as a lesser evil than discrimination against women? If not, how do you reconcile your description as true equality between the genders with your assertion that privilege should be taken from men and given to women only based on gender? Okay, 
One, uh, yes, I think that discrimination against men is of the same evil as discrimination against women. Oh, okay, okay. But you sort of just want to discriminate against men to favour women. No, no, that, that makes sense. Yeah, cool. I acknowledge that men are discriminated against in different ways to women. Women are discriminated against in different ways to men. However, I do believe that women are more marginalised than men in the Australian context and across the globe. All right, second part of that question. <laughs> The thing about privilege is that you don't take privilege from someone to give privilege to someone else. I have not advocated for taking male privilege and giving females privilege. My sincere apologies. I seem to have misunderstood you. With creating an equal society, some men will lose the high level of privilege that they have to make way for equality for women. Privilege is something that um, we don't talk about enough in society. Um, and I think that men have levels of privilege. Okay, I really don't understand this sort of privilege scale that you talk about. They mustn't have taught me like my privilege times tables in school or something. But check out the next 20 seconds or so. I seriously don't make any fucking sense of this. Um, but I also think that, and this is something I mentioned in my, uh, I think, two videos ago about privilege. Um, I spoke about privilege based on some of the comments that people had written, um, not in reply bearing to things that you had said, which you very clearly articulated you didn't say. Again, an assumption because I didn't say that you said them. See how we're doing this? You're making a lot of assumptions here. Um, no, to be honest, I, 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 you know, I just... <laughs> Yeah, I, I just don't understand what you're saying. Um, but I acknowledge that I have certain levels of privilege and foregoing those levels of privilege doesn't mean that I'm giving others privilege. It means that I'm creating an equal playing field. Still nothing, sorry. So the kind of privileges that I experience are, you know, based on my ethnicity and based on my sexuality. It's very easy for me to find employment. You know, I as this, like, for being part identifying as this, I have a lot of privilege that gives me access to jobs. Um, another part of privilege that I experience is walking down the street and not being, you know, shouted racial slurs at. Hey! Stop walking down the footpath, you black cunt! Based on my ethnicity. Okay, I feel I have to point out that that last bit was simply to demonstrate that this doesn't happen very often. I've got absolutely no problem with black cunts. You know, these are different types of privilege that everybody has. And it's not, you know, in the same way I have heterosexual privilege. At least we can all stop wondering. Like I don't, I'm not discriminated against in any context based on who I choose my sexual partners to be. So there's a whole range of privileges and I believe that men experience male privilege. <laughs> yeah, of course we do. Um, and that's not to say that all men experience the same level of male privilege in the same context because that's not the case and I would never say that that is the case. But, you know, essentially privilege is not something that you take from someone to give to someone else. Privilege is something that you relinquish so that everyone has the same opportunity. Can you please give me step-by-step -step instructions as to how to relinquish some privilege? Mm, five. Should Australia adopt a more socialist or communist system of government focused on equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity? Again, we're coming back to this same point. I have never advocated for equal outcome. So that women have the same representation as men. We disagree that Australia or whoever has equal opportunity. I firmly believe that we do not have equal opportunity. Yeah, and I'm just pointing out the fact that you're wrong. You firmly do believe that. Yeah, because it's stated in black and white in Australian law. But instead of taking what I've said for my word... <laughs> All hail Queen Talisha, whose word is above the law. You have made assumptions that I'm talking about something entirely different. So, I mean, no, I don't believe in equal opportunity, uh, equal outcome. <laughs> Busted. Um, I believe in equal opportunity. All right, number six, number six, number six. You have asserted... <laughs> <laughs> ...that a woman who holds an executive or ministerial position is of higher value than a woman who chooses not to build a career but rather stay home and fulfil the role of primary caregiver for children. And then you go on to say something about how I define women. No, I asked you about how you value women. I haven't said this. 
That's why I said you have asserted. Asserted. Just like plain and simple. You are making assumptions about what I'm saying. I'm saying... Oh, the video cuts out there. I really wanted to hear Talisha's formula for calculating the value of a woman too. Well, I've got to say, that was one poxy response video. I'd ask you to clearly demonstrate to the world why you believe some of the bizarre things that you do. Rather than offer any proof, except for the whole Punjabi seat classroom study, all you've done is point a camera at yourself and whinge like usual. It'd be great to receive some proper answers, Talisha. Oh, and keep in mind, admitting you're wrong is a proper answer, so don't be shy. On a feminazi cunt. Give me better days, give me better days.